and it's time to get started. How's everyone doing this morning? We are now live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, Amazon Live. This is all about how lawyers and other professionals can tap into the power of Clubhouse, the new audio only app. All you need is your phone and you're good to go. Here's the challenge, you guys, right now, especially you know, coming out of this upside down COVID-19 world, it's been more important than ever to connect on the social media platforms, to connect with other human beings in a way where we're building community, in a way where the lawyers and other professionals are adding value to our audiences, right? We're helping people, taking them by the hand and helping them get through this nightmare that we've all been living. And I think one of the most exciting apps, one of the most exciting social media platforms that I've come across since I've been on social. And for those of you that that have stayed connected with me over the years, you know, we rolled on to the internet in 1996 with our first website. When social came out, we dived right in and we've been on social ever since. And one of the advantages of social media is it lets us connect with other people. One of the advantages of the new Clubhouse app is it's going to allow you as lawyers and other professionals to connect with people unlike ever before. The relationships, the conversations, the rooms, and that's what they're called, they're rooms that you basically digitally walk into to either listen or have conversations, or you start your own room, you start your own club, and you moderate a topic, you answer questions, you share answers. It's one of the most powerful apps that I've been involved with. Now, I'm not sure how long Clubhouse is going to last, Maybe it's six months, maybe it's a year, maybe it's 20 years, I don't know. But right now it's the hottest place to be on the internet. It is for iPhones only right now. If you have an iPad, there are a couple of workarounds. It is by invite only. Reach out to me if you need some help with getting on the platform. I do understand that they will be uh, rolling out the Android version, hopefully within the next month or two. So sit tight, it's still in beta and um, what today's show is all about. Hey, Jim, it's good to see you. Everybody connect with Jim Fuse down here. He is a social media marketing expert. It's good to see you, Jim. And um, what I want to do today, you guys, is there's a lot of information out there about Clubhouse. I see my friends, great lawyers, just coming into the platform and dominating. I want to show you guys how to do that, too. So if you haven't yet jumped on to Clubhouse, if you're thinking about jumping on to Clubhouse, um, I think this video, which will be recorded, it's one reason I'm doing it, will give you a lot of tips, a lot of tools, a lot of approaches to making that good first impression on the, on the Clubhouse platform. I have created notes and tips in a couple of blog posts. If you want to see those, if you're not a video person and you want to read them, they're posted and shared at streaming.lawyer. That's my, my non-law firm website blog. A lot of video, a lot of uh, social media posts there. Just go to the search bar and type in Clubhouse. It'll take you to the post that I put together over the last couple of weeks on how lawyers can, can embrace the power of Clubhouse, how law school students can connect with lawyers and start networking, how to moderate a Clubhouse room. And so, so that information is there for you. Um, also, for those of you over on Amazon, you're going to see my book beneath the live video. This is the book that I'll be referencing today. It's the ultimate guide to social media for business owners, professionals, and entrepreneurs. Some of the communication tips that I talk about on Clubhouse, I've also dived a lot deeper into uh, in the book. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that to you guys. So why don't we get started? The first thing about Clubhouse is because we want to be heard above all the noise, because we want to build our brands right now, because the consumers and everybody else in the world uh, are on Zoom, they're on live video, they're on social media platforms, you need to be there too. And one of the advantages about Clubhouse is audio only. You don't have to worry about how you look. You don't have to worry about where you are broadcasting from. All you need is your phone, okay? Download the app and invite and you're good to go. So you're in Clubhouse, right? And you're thinking, okay, how can I make my best my best first impression? How can I put my best foot forward, right? To, to dive into this platform the right way. Well, I've made a few mistakes, but I've also figured a few things out. And what I wanna do is just quickly go through these. If you guys have questions, ask them 
in the comments. They'll get punched through to me. I'll answer those questions live. You guys can also text your questions to my community account, 949-577-7456, and I'll do my best to try to look for those text questions and come in and answer them for you. All right, so the first thing, you guys, is when you're on Clubhouse, especially for the lawyers out there, I want you to just change your mindset a little bit, okay? I want you to think about what Bob Berg teaches in his Go-Giver series of books. Um, I want you to be a Go-Giver. I want you to help, 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 and then help some more, okay? Don't self-promote. <clears throat> Don't dominate a room, even though you know the answer to the question that everyone's talking about. Uh, be delicate, take your time, baby steps, okay, into the community. But if you're listening in a room and you tap a button and you raise your hand, you come up on stage and you're adding value, do so in a way that's congruent with the atmosphere in the room. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But basically give, basically offer solutions, basically uh, do everything but, but um, self-market yourself. Okay, that's the first thing is have the mindset of a go-giver. And in chapter two of my book, there's a reason why I started it off with Bob Berg's approach to being a go-giver. Bob shared it, contributed a chapter. And by the way, 44 top experts from around the world contributed chapters on Amazon Live. The book's down there. Here's the book, contributed chapters. I think I wrote seven or eight of the chapters on how to do everything we're talking about on social media, on digital, how to build out your brand. But I started the book off with chapter two because it's all about having the right mindset and having a go-giver mindset. I'm telling you guys, for the lawyers on Clubhouse, if you have that go-giver attitude, it's going to separate you from everyone else. So it's explained in more detail in Bob's books, the go-giver series of books. It's explained in chapter two of my book, you guys. Understand the mindset of being a go-giver in Clubhouse. Number two complete your profile. When you get into Clubhouse, you, and let me just change a couple of things real quick. There we go. When you get into Clubhouse, you'll have a profile to fill out. The first three lines, the first three lines of your profile are what people will see when they tap on your picture. Okay. So you're going to upload a picture, a smiley face, a nice picture of you so people can really figure out who you are and you're going to complete the profile. If you look at my profile and I'm Mitch Jackson on Clubhouse, you'll see I feel the right way to do a profile. And this is something that I learned from a couple other people on the platform. Um, I, I listened in on a couple of rooms that my friend Mario Armstrong put together on how to create the proper profile for Clubhouse. And I took some of the suggestions that he made, complimented what I do as a lawyer, and then put together my profile. Create your profile the right way. The first three lines are critically important. Make sure they jump out at anyone tapping. It's unique. It's different. Mine says something like uh, a cowboy from a ranch in Tucson to the beaches of Southern California and the Southern California courtrooms, something like that. I think I put a swirl cactus. I put a surfer in there, but it lets people know there's, a little, there's something unique about who I am and what I do. You can do the same thing. As you drill down the profile, you're sharing who you are, why you're on Clubhouse, what value you can bring to your Clubhouse community. At the very bottom, and this is key, you're given the opportunity to link to your Instagram and your Twitter accounts. The reason this is important is because once a Clubhouse room is over, it evaporates into thin digital air. It's gone. It's hard to keep track of who you wanted to follow up with. It's hard for people to stay in contact with you unless during your room, and we're going to talk about this, every 10 or 15 minutes, you remind people, listen, let's stay connected. Tap on my profile picture, go down to the bottom, tap my Instagram account. Instagram account and Twitter accounts, and let's keep the conversation going on direct messages in Instagram DMs and Twitter DMs. That's how you do it. So make sure you link your Twitter and Instagram uh, accounts to your Clubhouse profile. Trust me on this, you guys, it's super important. I am taking live questions, and uh, I do want you guys to share this out on social media to other friends of yours who may have uh, questions about Clubhouse, or they're not getting the results that they want, or they're not sure how to use Clubhouse. I'm telling you guys, you guys digest what we're talking about today, and you're going to be in good shape. Jennifer Quinn, Jenny Q, who I'll be referring to in a little while, while 
says the go-giver way and Bob Berg are timeless. Applies to every platform and especially in Clubhouse. Great tip. Thank you, Jenny Q. And thank you, Jenny Q, for actually sponsoring Bob into the Clubhouse community. You get five invites, everyone, to invite people in that you think are going to be adding value to the community. And this is one reason I think the community is comprised of outstanding leaders in tech, in law, in entertainment, in venture capital, in entrepreneurship. For the most part, you've got some really high quality people in here that you can connect with almost instantly in these rooms. Jenny Q is one of them. And Jenny Q invited Bob Berg. That's who uh, sent Bob the invite. And at the bottom of Bob Berg's uh, clubhouse profile, you'll see Jenny Q's picture and name. And so when you do invite someone in, just keep in mind that you're linked to that person throughout both of your relationships in Clubhouse. So be particular about who you invite in because whether you like it or not, it's going to be a reflection or it could be on you know who you are and what you're all about. So be careful with that. Complete your profile, you guys, and that will help people connect with you. It will help uh, people who you follow possibly follow you back when you're in a room and everybody's pictures are in the room. Even though it's an audio, you can see everybody's smiling faces. People are tapping on each other's profiles. They're looking at those first three sentences. They're tapping view full profile. They're dropping down. And if they like what they see, they're following you. They're following you on Clubhouse. They're following you on Instagram. They're following you over on Twitter. So make sure you complete your profile. That's tip number two. Tip number three is join as many rooms as you can. You're not committed for life. This isn't a marriage. You can just tap and walk into a room and your mic is muted. You're in the audience. Think of it as walking into, you know, into a performance, walking into a conference or a convention where you've got speakers on stage. You're walking in through the back door of the room, you're taking a seat and you're just listening and you're enjoying. And I encourage all new Clubhouse users, by the way, you guys, sorry, I'm getting questions over on Amazon Live. Yes, you guys, on Amazon Live, this is the book. It should be below or next to the video. Everything you need broken down into three sections, the mindset of social media, which applies to Clubhouse. Number two, the personalities of the social media platforms. I'm talking about the personality of Clubhouse right now. Number three, how to communicate effectively on the digital social media platforms. The communication tips shared in the book work great on Clubhouse, and we're gonna go into specifics in about 20 or 25 minutes uh, on chapters I really want you guys to focus on because they will make or break your Clubhouse experience. And for everyone joining us, thank you very much, you guys, for sharing this out. I love the questions that are coming in, really appreciate it. I'm happy to report that on all the questions I'm seeing over in my panel, I'm going to be able to answer in my presentation. So sit tight, this is gonna be good stuff. So when we come into the rooms, I want you to just for the first couple of instances on Clubhouse, just come in and watch, right? Follow some of the rooms that I'm involved with on moderating or co-moderating. You'll get a feel for how the dance works, how a moderator can keep the conversation going, include other people on stage into the conversation, how to bring up people from the audience to the stage to either help co-moderate or to ask a question. And uh, let me look down here. So Jenny Q did invite Bob and it looks like uh, some other people also invited Bob too. And she cautions all of us, you know, you are connected forever, so to be careful. Look, the point I'm trying to make is connect with Jenny Q, right? Je connect with Jenny Q um, on Clubhouse. Steven asked, uh, I'm sorry, Stevan asked, and I asked how to pronounce your name, so I apologize for that. Stevan, it's good to see you. So I loved connecting with you. I I enjoy how you're how you're moderating your rooms, how you're bringing everybody into the conversation, and you make people feel special, right? When they're on stage, you make you know, okay. I'm glad to be here, and and Stevan's glad that I'm here, and so are the other moderators, and we can contribute to the conversation. So what are my favorite clubhouse rooms? My favorite clubhouse rooms, for me, have nothing to do with the law. Okay, a little secret, guys. And I was going to talk about the strategy, but since Stevan brought this up and follow him on Clubhouse and on social media, you guys, um, I like going into rooms, talking about things that are of interest to me, whether it's the sciences, whether it's health, whether, you know, I'm here in Orange County, California, we're an hour south of LA and Hollywood. 
Uh, my daughter is working in a litigation uh, entertainment IP department with her firm. So I like diving into rooms involving actors and producers and uh, executives and heads of movie studios. That's fascinating to me. AI, technology, those rooms are also interesting. Sometimes I'm the only lawyer in the room. And if I jump up on stage and I'm, I'm asked to participate in the conversation, guess what happens? People start noticing that you're that lawyer on stage. Everyone else may at some point in the future, whether they want to or not, need a lawyer. If you can, if you can create that no like, and trust factor while you're on stage, because you're a go-giver, you're giving and you're helping and you're trying to add value to the audience. Uh, when they need a good lawyer, guess who they're going to think of? They're going to think of you or me in Southern California, right? And so for me, I really enjoy walking into other rooms in industries and professions that, that I'm not involved with, but I am fascinated by. That works for me. Now, having said that, I also really enjoy rooms with law school students, other lawyers and professors where we're sharing trial advocacy tips. I am a trial lawyer. I love trying cases. Uh, I think it's really important that lawyers continue to try this in front of a jury. And so, Stevan, I also really enjoy those types of rooms, too. All right, let's go down to step number four. Watch good moderators. Um, moder you were not born being good moderators. What's a moderator? Okay, let me outline the room real quick for you guys. And on Amazon Live, this is what's being asked right now. What's a room and what's a moderator? Great question. All right. When you walk into, think of Clubhouse as a convention with big hallways. And as you're walking down the hallway, there's, there's a feed that tells you what rooms to your left and right are available that you can walk into as a guest. There are open rooms. There are some closed rooms. There are rooms specific towards certain people. So go ahead and look at the description. But when you see a room that says something like artificial intelligence, lawyers, and trials in the future. Let's talk about it. That fascinates me. So I tap and I walk into the room and I'm in the audience. I'm sitting there quietly. My mic is muted. I don't have to do anything. I could be making dinner, taking a bath, uh, walking the dog, but it's, it's almost like a podcast. You can just listen. Now, the next level in the room you're going to see are people who are followed by speakers. So for example, if I walk into a room and uh, some of the speakers are following me, that's where I'll pop into the room at this next middle layer. And you'll see it's, a, it's normally a, a, there's less people in that layer. And those are really good people to follow. I mean, if the speakers are following the people in this, this, this second tier, probably people you may want to follow too if you're interested in that room. Uh, at the top are the actual speakers or the moderators. And so what happens is if you start your own room, you're a moderator. You're in charge of the room. You can stop the room anytime you want. You can invite people up from the audience. If you're in the audience and you wave your hand by tapping the little hand icon in the bottom right of your iPhone, a moderator can tap and invite you up onto stage. When you're invited up onto stage, your mic is live. Uh, one good protocol I'll just talk about now is when you come up onto stage, tap the mute button, which is the bottom right microphone button on your iPhone, just to mute yourself. As a moderator, if someone comes up on stage and they haven't muted themselves, you can tap on their picture and you can mute their mic for them. They probably just don't know they can do that, that it's a function, but it keeps the sound clear for everyone else, especially if people you invite up on the stage have noise in the background. So um, that's how the rooms are laid out. You've got your audience, you've got people followed by the moderators, and then you've got your stage, which has moderators and people invited up to stage to share a comment, to just say hello, to ask a question, or possibly even become a moderator. If somebody comes up to the stage and you want to invite them to continue helping moderate the show, maybe it's a friend of yours and you've worked this out ahead of time. You tap on their profile picture and you can make them a moderator. It's one of the three or four options beneath uh, their picture. Super easy. If you do it, let me just share a bit of caution with you. I wouldn't make someone a moderator who you don't know because they can they can technically take over the show. They can shut down the room. There's really no reason to do that. Generally speaking, um, it's always good to have more than one moderator. Uh, if your room does have a glitch, if there's a hiccup with, with Clubhouse, it may shut down your room. It may bounce you out, which will shut down the room. So if Stevan and I were talking uh, to a group of law school students about, you know, 
about what it's really like to practice law, which is one of my things about, about Clubhouse is it allows us to pull back the curtains and really share information with people that, that I didn't have access to. I didn't have access to this information when I started practicing. If Stevan came up, I could tap and make him a co-moderator. So now we're on the same mindset and we know how the rooms work. Now I've got somebody so that if I get hiccuped out of Clubhouse, the room's going to keep running. I can just come back in and tap my way back in super easy. So that was tip number five is using co-moderators. It also allows you to have more of a back and forth dynamic, okay? Uh, if Jenny Q were on stage with me and we're moderating how to live stream, okay, which was her chapter in my book. In fact, it was chapter, let me see, chapter 21, uh, live streaming strategies with Jenny Q, chapter 21. It's great. The strategies that she shares, I'm using right now, the strategies that Jenny Q shares, Jennifer Quinn, I'm using the audio aspect of that over in Clubhouse. So if Jenny Q and I are on stage, what's cool about having a co-moderator, you guys, is you're not up there by yourselves. You can play off of each other, right? If you get tired talking, Jenny Q, you're up, make it happen. She'll take over and she'll keep the conversation going. Uh, it just makes it easier. And there's another benefit to having a co-moderator. And I co-moderate all the time, whether it's my room or someone asks me to come in as a co-moderator, if my litigation schedule allows for it, I'm all in. It, it's super fun. Um, down here, got to put this up. Wow, Mitch, always on the cutting edge. Well, for good and bad sometimes, right? Sometimes I crash and burn and sometimes I dive into an app that just seems to have a lot of legs to it and a lot of traction. I think Clubhouse is one of those. So thank you for the kind uh, words. I really appreciate it. Um, the other thing about moderating with a co-moderator, you guys, is if you plan it out ahead of time, and I'm going to talk about this after I get through the basics, some really powerful strategies to fill up your room and to promote what you're doing. Um, if I bring uh, Jenny Q into, and I don't want to pick on you, Jenny Q, I hope this is okay, but if I bring, bring Jennifer Quinn into and co-moderate a room with me, her audience, oftentimes, people who are following her will come into the room. So it allows you to have a room with more people, more dynamic conversation, more hands are going up to ask questions. Uh, sometimes with two or three moderators, that's just the way to go. Um, yeah, over on uh, Amazon Live, I've got a note. Co-moderators are everything in Clubhouse. Co-moderators are everything in Clubhouse as long as you have the right co-moderators, right? And, and what I would suggest you guys is make sure your co-moderators, I mean, I agree, but make sure your co-moderators understand what we're talking about today because I've been in clubhouse rooms where it's almost like I'm not there. Someone reaches out to ask me to be into the room. I'm a co-moderator. I'm actually doing them a favor by being there. I'm bringing my audience in. I'm bringing my expertise and my brand in. And 10, 15, 20 minutes go by before the other moderator says, Mitch, what do you think? Or Mitch, you know, it, it, you want to make sure you're on the same page, right? and involve everyone else in the conversation. So think about using co-moderators. And like I said, I've got list and blog posts on everything I'm talking about over at streaming.lawyer. Just type in Clubhouse in the search bar. It'll take you to the three or four posts that we put together over the last two weeks that dives into everything I'm talking about, some in a little bit more detail. All right, next, share on social media. As Mark Schaefer pointed out in chapter 34 of my book, okay, Mark Schaefer uh, contributed a chapter. He's the author of Known, How to Become Known on Social Media, must-have book. It's really good, you guys. Well, how are you going to become known on Clubhouse, right? I mean, if you've got a story to tell, if you've got answers to questions, if you've got a brand you want to build out, then you want to become known not only on Clubhouse, but all the digital platforms. You want to take advantage of the, the momentum, the wave, as Mark would say in his new book, great book, you guys, Cumulative Advantage, and I wasn't planning on sharing this, but this flows with what I'm saying. If you want to take advantage of the seam, the seam that Clubhouse is offering you right now, it's an opportunity to build your brand out, to show your expertise in, in front of a brand new audience, uh, get Cumulative Advantage. It's one of the best business branding life books I've read probably in the last 15 years. That's how good it is, you guys. It's, it's really good. I actually messaged Mark last night and said, this is more than a marketing and branding book. This is a life, a life skill book. 
and I recommend it, you guys. It's not even here on Amazon right now, but it's in my Amazon store. Um, think about how can you become known and how can you share your clubhouse rooms, right? And if you guys have tips for anything that I'm talking about, uh, anything that I'm missing based upon the topic that I'm talking about, if you have questions, ask your questions on social. They will get pushed through to me. Um, if you have a question about something I haven't covered yet, ask it. And when I get to it, I'll bring it up and we can talk more about it. Share this out, if you would, please, on social media using the share button, regardless of if you're on you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it might be, just share this out to people who you think might find it valuable. Um, so when you create a room on Clubhouse, it's super easy. You go to your phone, you tap create a new room. So let's say I create a new room on, um, on uh, look what my kids gave me my Arizona candle. Okay. I am not a brand ambassador for this company, but my kids gave this to me uh, for Christmas and it smells like the Arizona desert after a, a monsoon in August or September after a, a rainstorm. And if you've ever been in the desert after a rainstorm with the creosote and Palo Verde uh, and, and cacti, uh, the smell of the desert is just a wonderful, unique smell. That's what that candle reminds me of. Um, where was I going with this? So sharing on social media, the point is, if I'm doing a room about this company, about this candle, about the experience of smell, about how, how this, if we surround our senses with the right positive um, influences and experiences, it can make you have the right mindset right, to embrace what we're doing in today's world to be proactive. So if I'm doing a room about this right here, you guys, what I might want to do is I tap, I create the room, why Arizona candles made by homesick, that's perfect, made by homesick, uh, make me happy and more productive, right? So you create a caption, a title, you can then fill in the description, you can select a date and time that your room goes live, you can add co-moderators. So I could add Jenny Q as a co-moderator to my room, so she's part of the project. And then you can click save and your room's ready to go. You can plan rooms ahead of time, whether it's 15 minutes or you know next week. Now when you've created your room, down at the bottom of the room you've created, there are share buttons. You can share to Twitter, you can copy the link to your room, you can share to calendars, you can share using some of the apps on your phone. There are four options as of the time of this video. Pre-promote your shows, you guys. Grab that link, okay? Copy it over into a Word document or a Google Doc or into your notepad on your phone and create a provocative, interesting, you know, heading or title to your show. Hey, everyone, we're talking candles, law, and life success techniques next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse, click the link below. That's how easy it is. That's how you can pre-promote your shows. You can also just hit the Twitter button and it'll promote to Twitter, clean it up a little bit, and then hit go and you're good to go. Uh, let me see, I've got a question here. How to make sure the co-mods will be attending? Any notification or editing options on that? So within Clubhouse, there are not, as of this moment, but let me just say that if you've taken the time to reach out to somebody to be a co-moderator, I'll usually do that with people who I know. If it's someone who I'm watching and I've met on Clubhouse, which is the case, I've actually met some really cool new people on Clubhouse and we've co-moderated rooms together, they're consistent. I can just tell by how they handle the room, how they've um, communicated with me, that I can rely upon them being there to be a co-moderator. But here's the deal. One of the beautiful things about digital and what we're doing right now is that people sometimes will misplace a calendar event. They won't um, uh, show up because of something else that's happening and that's okay. Have the mindset that if your co-moderator doesn't show up, that you know the show must go on and just go on and have fun. You know, As Jenny Q couldn't do it, too busy doing her hair, I get that. Let's get started with today's room. If anyone would like to jump up, if I see somebody down there that I know, I might call them out by name and uh, say, come on up if you want to co-moderate the show with me. Super easy. I wouldn't get too worked up over it. Uh, Ryan says, great content. Ryan, thank you. I really appreciate the, uh, the encouragement. Just getting started. There's a lot more coming. Let me come down to 
how to use Clubhouse. That's what this is all about. Okay, so we're sharing the room on social media, both before the Clubhouse event and then after the Clubhouse event. Here's a little pro tip that seems to be working really well. What you can do is at the end of your room, if you have a live video show like I do, or if you're comfortable with Facebook Live, what you can do is say, listen, everyone, we're going to take the conversation in this room and we're going to roll it over to my live video show in about 15 minutes. Gives us a chance to have water, maybe use the restroom. So if you have more questions, if you want to meet people who you just listen to Clubhouse and see their smiles and, and look into their digital eyeballs, join us over at streaming.lawyer in about 15 minutes. We're going to continue the conversation. What a great way to take one platform, you know, and then play it a certain way to continue the conversation, to continue the relationship building to another platform. Uh, with Jimmy Ferris, who is a, um, a Super Bowl champ for New England Patriots, we did a show where we started on a live video, just as I described. And at the end of the show, we rolled the conversation over 15 minutes later to Clubhouse and had another hour long conversation. It was wonderful. I had so much fun. Um, we had two separate audiences, you know, we had our audience on live video and then 15 minutes after we we're done, I would say about 10% of that audience was already on clubhouse, but the other 90%, it was a new audience that we focused in on a specific part of our earlier conversation. So that's a powerful way to, um, to engage on the clubhouse platform that I haven't seen too many people do. I've got some questions here. Yes, Jenny Q says the Jimmy Ferris room was good. Yes, it was. Um, let's see. The agenda. So it means it's just a risk that they may show up or not upon availability. Okay, so when you have a co-moderator, what we do is we communicate offline away from Clubhouse. Uh, you know, you know, I would reach out to, I'm not sure who wrote this because you need to access and give uh, approval, you guys, to if you're asking me a question from Facebook, you have to tell StreamYard and Facebook they can talk to each other. It's a little button you have to click. But I'll reach out, for example, to Jenny Q ahead of time and say, let's do a club, let's do a room tomorrow or next week. What time works for you? I use Calendly, C A N D L Y, is a service that allows someone to just pick 60 minutes in my calendar. It's me, Alwyn. Oh, yes. How are you doing? All the way from, I want to say, Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken. So completely different time zone. I guess it's probably night there. It's good to see you. So that's my advice on that. Just plan ahead of time. And one of the reasons you want to stay connected, everybody, with um, Twitter DMs and Instagram DMs is that's a great place where you can you can schedule these things ahead of time so that you're not caught unexpectedly with not having a co-moderator. Uh, but once again, I I haven't had any issues. It's been it's been a pleasure to co-moderate with the people I've been moderating with. Let's reset real quick. What I'm trying to do, you guys, is I'm trying to share how professionals, how lawyers and other professionals can use Clubhouse. This isn't about marketing on Clubhouse. It's not about get rich quick uh, rooms that you are going to see on Clubhouse. There's more, you know, these these kids that you know how to become a billionaire in two days or less. This is about how professionals can build their professional brands. Uh, which will result in referrals to your company, to your business, to your practice, to your law firm through the Clubhouse app, or it starts a relationship, which using the techniques we talked about, carry over onto the other social media platforms, which then result in referrals to your firm next week, next month, next year. That's the long-term play, and it seems to be working very, very well. Uh, so you're sharing on social, Number one, we talked about having the right mindset, having a go-giver mindset. Number two, complete the profile so that it's full and complete, kind of sassy, provocative, maybe something a little bit different than just I'm a lawyer. Number three, join rooms and listen, get a feel for the lay of the land. Number four, watch good moderators. And if you want names of good moderators, private message me on Instagram or Twitter, and I'll share a couple of people you want to follow on Clubhouse. Uh, to get a feel for what a good moderator sounds like and how they work the room. It's about working the room, right? Number five, um, use co-moderators when you can to tap into their audience to keep the conversation going. Number six, share on social media both before, uh, during, and then after. There are ways, even though the room disappears once you're done, you can continue the conversation in a blog post, in a live video, email, text, phone call, follow up with people that you connected with on the room 
uh, and take advantage of these new connections. Uh, number seven, reset the room. Once your room is live and you're going, there are people coming in after the beginning of the room. So what you want to do every 10 or 15 minutes is reset the room. Once again, if my room is about, if the room is about my book, okay, let me, let me have a little strategic intent here on what we're talking about. If the room's about my book, which I think's the best book about how professionals and business owners and entrepreneurs can use social media. And the reason I'm saying that is 44 of these chapters were written by friends of mine, experts, top experts as a favor for me. And they contributed these chapters to the book. So it's like the best of the best contributed to this book. That's why it's so good. That's why I'm not bashful about telling you that. I'm doing a room about this, you guys. Um, what you want to do is at the beginning of the room, look, we're going to talk about my favorite seven, my favorite seven social media approaches that will help you dominate on the Clubhouse platform. Let's talk about it. I've got some communication experts. I've got some great Clubhouse moderator professionals that are joining me on stage, and we're going to answer your questions and tell you what works best for us. Then we have a conversation, right? The co-moderators are bringing everybody in. Quick caveat, normally on stage, you work top from bottom left to right. And what that means is if I bring you up stay on stage and there are four people in front of you that have already been brought up on stage, unless the moderators tell you otherwise, go ahead and wait your turn until someone says, you know, hey, Jenny Q, I'm so glad. Thank you for being so patient. Please unmute your mic, jump in with a question. Tell us a little bit about who you are in 60 seconds or less. See what I just did. A lot of people tend to ramble on Clubhouse. Just, just share a little polite reminder. She's not one of them. Share a polite reminder that, you know, hey, I want to know who you are. Let's keep it short and quick. And if you have a question, if you want to say hi uh, to any of the moderators, let's make it happen. Go. So you can control the conversation that way, right? That way, right? But here's the thing. As these rooms get going, they kind of take on a life of their own. And people can come in after you've already explained what the room's about. So always circle back every 10 or 15 minutes, you know, and just let everyone know, hey, everybody, listen, just to reset the room. You can say that we're resetting the room right now. We're talking about the ultimate guide to social media for business owners, professionals, and entrepreneurs. We've got uh, three experts up here co-moderating the event. We want you to be successful on Clubhouse. Bring your questions, bring your tips, and what's working for you. We want to know. And then go back into the conversation of the room. That's resetting the room. What you also want to do is if you've got a lot of people in the room that you're bringing up, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings by tapping their profile button and sending them back into the audience. And that's the way it's done. Tap, return to audience. It's okay. This, this is what you how you want to use Clubhouse. You don't want a, a crowded stage, generally speaking, for the type of shows, the type of rooms that I'm talking about. Let people know. Listen, you guys, we want to make sure there's plenty of room on stage. Once we're done, you've asked your question, you had a chance to say hi, give us a digital hug. What we're going to do to keep the, the, the stage open so that other people can come up and join us is we are going to bounce you back down to the audience. It's nothing personal. If you hear another question that you want to participate, raise your hand again. And if we have time, we'll bring you back up. That's the way you handle it, okay? You're resetting the room. You're managing the room. That works really well. Okay, number eight, encourage engagement. A lot of people on Clubhouse are down in the audience. They're shy. They're introverts. It's their first week on Clubhouse. They still have their party hat on. They're not really sure what the protocol is. Should I tap the little button and raise my hand? Should I just sit here and not say anything at, at all? I've got so much co to contribute. I really want to meet this speaker on stage. So as a, as a moderator, depending on the type of show that you're having, and I encourage a show that includes everyone, let people in the audience know, listen, you guys, We'd love to have you raise your hand or we'll be opening up the room in about 10 minutes and we want everyone to raise your hand and come up on stage and say hi. We'd love to give you a digital hug and listen to what you have to say. Okay, so encourage people to participate. And once again, it depends on the type of room. If it's just two people sharing, you know, lecturing to the room, which probably isn't the best way to, to use Clubhouse, but I've seen this done, then you may not be inviting people up on the stage. But... For most of the rooms that I'm involved with, my whole thing is I love meeting new people, the relationship, the synergy of, of crowdsourcing ideas and solutions, especially when it comes to trial advocacy. It's powerful. I've been on stage, you guys, with some of the best trial lawyers across the country, maybe even the world. We have lawyers coming in from, from other countries and we're sharing tips and we're answering questions for law school students. And I absolutely love doing that. 
<clears throat> but one reason those rooms are successful is because we're encouraging everyone to raise their hand. We're encouraging people to talk. Now, here's a little tip. When you're encouraging engagement and someone comes up and they ask a question, and for those of you that have been in Clubhouse, you've seen this happen. You ask, a, somebody ask a question, the moderator answers the question and then goes to the next person. Doesn't even acknowledge the person that just asked the question. So I think what's really a powerful way to engage with your audience on Clubhouse is when somebody takes the time to raise their hand and come up on stage uh, and you don't know who that person is, we wanna treat everyone with respect, right? Everyone with dignity. Frankly, I've seen people in the audience that had 10 times more, 100 times more experience because I know them. Some of them have been my clients than the people on stage. Uh, from a wealth standpoint, they have more money and have had more success than anybody on stage. And they raise their hand and come up on stage and the people on stage don't know who this person is. And it's kind of funny to watch because I'm thinking to myself, if you knew who you were talking to, uh, you would definitely just mute your mic and, and ask this person to share with you their wisdom and their business secrets. So you don't know who's in the audience. So here's what you want to do. When someone comes up, I think it's just the polite thing to do. They ask the question. Once they're done, acknowledge acknowledge what they what was just discussed. You know, Jenny Q, that was a fantastic question. I'm so glad you brought that topic up. It's not something that we've talked about yet today. And so for that, thank you very much. Really appreciate you. You're welcome in my room anytime. All right, let's move on to the next uh, to the next person in line. Thank you for being patient. Uh, you know, John, unmute your mic and let's dive in. So Maria says, that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I did not know how to use the platform. Well, it's not only you have to you have to assume as a moderator that maybe someone's new and they don't know how to use the platform. So take them by the digital hand and kind of walk them through. Now that you know what I'm talking about, you're aware of these dynamics, right? On the other side of the coin, um, if you are if you are new to Clubhouse and you're brought up on stage, if you're aware of what we've been talking about, then that allows you to kind of construct your conversation and use open-ended questions to really make this more effective for you. So Maria, thank you for pointing that out. Yes, we've all made these mistakes. Look, when you're brought into a room, like I said, there's an order unless the moderators uh, say otherwise. Hey, there's only six of us in the room. Let's kind of have a free for all. If you have something to say, just unmute and jump in. And that works really well for small rooms. For large rooms, you wanna wait your turn or until a moderator goes, Hey, I see Mitch Jackson down towards the bottom, everyone. I know he he private messaged me on Instagram. He's got to run, but I really want him to contribute uh, a couple of minutes of his thoughts to this trending topic. I apologize for everybody we're jumping over. Mitch, can you unmute and jump in? If you're going to invite someone in out of turn, that's the way to do it. Otherwise, don't jump up on stage, raise your hand, and just start talking when there's 10 people in front of you. It's not going to be well received. I did that. You know, I was the lawyer in the room. I've got something to say. I didn't realize there was a protocol. There was a pause in the conversation. I thought everyone was waiting for somebody to unmute and, and jump in. And so that's what I did. The moderator cut me off. Hey, Mitch, we're really interested in hearing with what you've got to say, but do us a favor. Why don't you go ahead and mute? What we're going to do is go top to bottom, left to right in the order of everyone uh, who's on stage. I'm sorry I didn't point that out earlier. My bad, Mitch, but we're glad to have you up on stage. See how you can handle that in a very tactful way. Sometimes it's not what you say, but it's how you say it, right? So uh, encouraging engagements, number eight. I've got 12 tips here, you guys, and then eight other pro tips we're gonna run through super fast, but it's going to uh, give you guys value. Let me look, boy, we've got a lot of questions coming in. I've got my work cut out for me. All right, number nine. You know, you don't wanna self-promote, I think, on Clubhouse or on social media. And what I mean by that is, you know, be a go-giver, uh, add value to the conversation, offer solutions, share your secret sauce, give, 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 and then give some more. You don't want to be that lawyer jumping up on stage and raising your hand. They unmute you. You come up on stage and you spend the next five minutes talking about how great you are and your verdicts and why you're the next best thing since sliced bread. That, that, it, it doesn't work anywhere and it's not going to work on Clubhouse. So when that happens, you guys, um, Use Ryan Folwin's 313 approach to communication. Uh, when you're asked to share who you are and what you do, okay, that's your opportunity 
in 30 seconds or less to share your audio version of your elevator speech, who you are, what you do, how you can help, why people may want to listen to what you have to say. It gives a little context to why you're on stage. Uh, that's your opportunity. Don't spend more than 20 or 30 seconds doing this. That's a big mistake I see people do. Um, they kind of take over the stage and that's just not what you want to do on Clubhouse. So I like Ryan Folan's 313 approach. It's chapter 42 in my book, you guys, down below or over on the side on Amazon Live. But he breaks down the 313 and there's a right and wrong way in 30 seconds or less to share who you are, what you do, how you can help in the context of what you'll be adding into the conversation. So definitely pay attention to that rather than self-promoting during your introduction or while you're on stage. Critically important, you guys. Um, as a moderator, manage your stage and audience. This is number 11. So make sure you keep things flowing. If you've got somebody that's that, you know, inadvertently, and it happens, uh, it's not on purpose, but sometimes people will ramble on. They're nervous. They're not sure what to say. They're not sure if they asked the right question or how long they should speak. It's okay to unmute as a moderator and say, hey, Mitch, great take. Listen, we've got five other people here. I want you to stay on stage and listen and please unmute and share in the future if you have something in addition to what others have to say. But we do have, we do want to wrap this up at the top of the hour. I've got five other people on stage. Is it okay with you if we go ahead and move along to Sally, right? And you can just keep things moving along as a moderator. Another thing to help manage your stage is remind everyone to keep their mics muted. Tap the mute button while you're on stage, okay? Otherwise, what's going to happen is that background noise is going to interfere with the use and enjoyment of the room by all the other clubhouse listeners in the audience and frankly, everybody else on stage. Another thing I like to do with managing the room, in addition to resetting the room every 10 to 15 minutes, and this is really important, you guys, so pay attention. Okay, here's what I like to do. When something, when a value bomb gets dropped, something interesting happens, everyone's like, yeah, and they're tapping their mic, and when you mute and unmute on Clubhouse, it can mean a couple of things. It could mean a clap. You're clapping for what someone said. You're acknowledging, yeah, right on. That's exactly what I'm thinking. You can tap to praise or 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 uh, point, point out to the rest of, of everybody in the room that you approve of what's been said. So tapping the mic is a cool way to, to show your appreciation for what's just been said, what's just been asked, or an answer that's just been given. Along those same lines, you guys, you can use the mic to stimulate activity. If you've got 10 people on stage, maybe two moderators, and then eight other people you've brought up from the audience, if somebody says something, or if you're looking for, does everybody agree with what Mitch said, with what Mitch just said? If so, tap your mic. And you can see the mics on the audience lighting, lighting, uh, coming in and out, muting and unmuting, right? And it's kind of fun. It's a dynamic that you can use and have fun with, which the audience will be seeing, and it just kind of keeps the room moving since it is audio only. The other thing, though, is always let everyone know when a value bomb is dropped. Listen, you guys, this is an awesome platform. What a great way to connect with everybody. Tap on the person's profile to your left or right, people on stage, people in the audience, people who you find interesting, drill down, check their profiles out, follow them on Clubhouse, tap their Instagram and Twitter links, follow them and connect on DMs, continue the conversation once our room is over. If you have a club within Clubhouse, which is going to be another video for another time, you can invite people to stay connected in your club. Another thing that I do that I, I really think is important for the lawyers is because these rooms disappear when you're over, during the course of my rooms, what we're starting to do and we're seeing really good results is we're letting everyone know, listen, you guys, if you want to stay connected with me, if you want to get a one or two sentence text or email update the next time I go live, jump over to streaming.lawyer slash Mitch. Okay, the links, don't worry, you don't have to write it, write it down, everybody. The links in my bio on Instagram, in my bio on Twitter. Just jump over to that link, and the next time I go live, maybe an hour before I go live, I'll go ahead and shoot a text and an email out just to let you know in case you're interested. It's a great way to avoid missing rooms. All right, let's dive back into today's topic. You're integrating these third party services into the conversation. So, 
It keeps the room stimulated, engaged, and it keeps them asking questions. The other thing is, if you do it the right way, it shows that you're trying to add value. Oftentimes, you'll get someone in a room, raise their hand and ask a question, and it just can't be answered in Clubhouse. Uh, or you can share the short answer, but you need more information. I think as a lawyer, one thing we can do uh, is invite people, listen, that's a great question. I need to know more information. If you want to jump over and 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 connect with me on Instagram DM or Twitter DMs and, and continue the conversation outside of Clubhouse, it would be my pleasure. No big deal. The ball's in your court. So you can use these platforms to keep the conversation going if you want to. Uh, which then raises the next issue. You don't want to be giving legal advice, right? Pursuant to state bar rules on Clubhouse. So you, you gen, I think best practices is to include a disclaimer at the bottom of your profile. Look at how I did it. I linked to the disclaimer at streaming.lawyer. And I pointed out when someone looks at my profile, no legal advice is being given, no attorney-client relationship. And there's a link there. Now, during the live audios, in Clubhouse, oftentimes what I'll do every 10 or 15 minutes is I will let people know, listen, we're just having a conversation. Uh, we're sharing thoughts. No legal opinions are being given. Uh, no attorney-client relationship is, is uh, being formed. Please, if you have any questions, check the link at the bottom of my bio, click tap my, fing tap my face, drill down to the bottom of the profile, and you'll see the link that you can go to but there is no legal advice being given, and then continue with the conversation. I think that's just a good, clean way to make sure everybody's on the same page and you're complying with state bar rules. Let me see here. Yes, absolutely, Alwyn, thank you. Absolutely, a clear call to action or invitation to a personal conversation indeed. Why not? You know, If we're there to build relationships, why not invite those relationships to continue once clubhouse rooms disappear? It's really hard to keep track of all the cool people that you guys that you meet in Clubhouse, right? And so for me, this has really um, been an effective way to stay connected and really take that relationship to the next level, whether we're co-moderating a room, whether we're referring business back and forth. I mean, this is the power of Clubhouse. Uh, Awan also puts a short disclaimer uh, in her profile. Very, very smart. All right. So. Number 10, you want to be consistent. You want to be consistent in who you are and how you show up, right? You can't fake it on social media. You've heard me during this live video make mistakes and, and every once in a while I use poor grammar. It's, it's okay. Just be you, be real, be the best you can be. Um, I think that for some of you, a weekly show on Clubhouse, a weekly room is, is not a bad idea depending on what you do for a living and you're consistent every single Monday at five, right? Every single Wednesday at noon Eastern. Remember, we're dealing with multiple time zones around the world. So when you promote your room outside of Clubhouse, make sure you use the time zone, be, be specific. In most of my stuff, I'll say, I'm going live to talk about, you know, chapter 37 in my book, you know, 10 ways to start your next social media post, your live stream, your blog post, your podcast. There's 10 great ways to do that. We're going to talk about that. We'll go live at 10 Pacific, 1 Eastern. This avoids people missing your clubhouse room. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, thank you. Uh, really appreciate the kind comments. And uh, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying. This is what's working for me. So we're having a lot of fun. Uh, inconsistent, I think, is a plus. The way I like to use Clubhouse, just because I've got a lot going on, I'm still a full-time trial lawyer, is I'm using it in a less structured way. I'm creating rooms when I have something to say. I'm co-moderating rooms when I'm asked. And I'm uh, cruising the hallway and sticking my head into rooms that are of interest to me where I either just want to listen. And when someone invites me on stage and it's nothing personal, but I'll just go ahead and type, tap, uh, thank you, but not now. You have an option. You don't have to hop up on stage if somebody invites you, okay? And it just kind of depends on what I'm doing and, and, and where I am. If I'm on a run and I'm listening to Clubhouse instead of a podcast, I don't think anybody wants me to come in if I'm breathing heavily, if I'm out of breath, if I'm on a long uphill, that's not really how it's done. So, um, Jim, thank you. Thank you, Jim. And I've always enjoyed the rooms that you're a part of too. And, you know, you can... You can be my co-moderator co anytime, Goose, anytime. And uh, I know Jim would tell me the same thing. So it's kind of fun. Um, 
to do these things. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm an energetic person, right? You only go through life once, so why waste time? You got to bring that energy, that enthusiasm, that life, speak from the heart. I think that's what makes a good trial lawyer, and I think that's also what makes it fun to do Clubhouse. Uh, so manage your staging audience, number 12, your avatar and photo. You can switch these out. So pick a photo that that describes who you are or what you do, right? I, I really like a profile picture. Um, I just think that, you know, it's kind of interesting when someone's up on stage and it's a logo, I, I, I'm not connecting with that person. That's just me. So I would recommend using a profile picture. You guys can swap these out live. While you're on stage, you can actually tap your picture. You can go to your phone. You can tap another picture. Pro tip, what I did is I created a folder just for my clubhouse pictures, potential profile pictures, and I put them there ahead of time. And you can change your pictures out. I've got a picture you know, like this. I've got a picture with my COVID-19 mask on. I've got a, a picture of a yellow sticky that says, be right back. So if I'm on stage and I'm waiting for my turn and I have to take a phone call or I have to step out for a moment, I just tap and bring that yellow sticky in, be right back. So everyone knows I'm still there. Something came up. They, they know I'm a busy trial lawyer and that I'll be back. And if I lose my place, I'll tap it again. I'll put my face back into the profile picture, hit save. Now I'm back. Tap my mic a few times. Moderators will look for that and then they'll bring you back into the queue. So. In summary, on the first 12 things, you guys, and I think the next eight items are even more important. Number one, understand what the mindset is. Go give a mindset. Number two, complete your profile, especially the description like we talked about. Those first three lines are super important. Number three, join rooms and listen. Get a feel for how the platform works. It's not rocket science. One or two rooms, 15, 20 minutes. You should be good to go. You're going to get a feel for how Clubhouse works, especially if you're in one of my rooms because <clears throat> I try to walk my talk with everything we're talking about. Uh, watch good moderators on, on how they handle rooms. Chapter 15 in my book, you guys, is the seven principles of success on social media. And I'm talking about things like use people's names, uh, shine a bright light on other people, tap on their profile while they're waiting their turn and see what they do for a living. Uh, see where they're from. Maybe there's a story there. When you bring them in, you know, hey, Mitch, it's great to see you. Thanks for jumping up on stage. I noticed you grew up on a ranch in Tucson, but now you're living in Southern California, paddle boarding, racing motocross, and trying cases. What in the world led you to Orange County, California? You can have fun with this, right? So the more personal you make the experience for your co-moderator, for speakers on stage, I think the more dynamic the rooms are. And I didn't bring that up the first time. So uh, chapter five in my book really does lay out how to do just that. Uh, number five, use co-moderators. Number six, share on social media before and after. Number seven, reset the room every 10 or 15 minutes. Number eight, encourage engagement. Nine, don't self-promote. Give, 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 and then give some more. Add value to the conversation. Everything else will fall into place. The business will come. The referrals will come. Uh, number 10, be consistent. Number 11, manage your stage and audience. And number 12, uh, understand that you can change your avatar anytime. If you're not married to it, you guys. You can swap it out in real time during the shows. And so play around. If you're ever in my rooms and you guys want to play around with anything we talked about, jump up on stage and we can do it in real time and I can walk you through it. It's, it's always a pleasure. Just don't worry about that. All right. Also, for those of you over on Amazon Live, I'm not uh, ignoring you. It's good to see everybody. Uh, yes, the book is below the video or to the left, and I am going to be covering questions from Amazon Live, text questions, and those questions you guys are asking here. Uh, let me see. Beverly McNeil. Oh, thank you, Beverly. Beverly says, this is really great info, Mitch. And just in case people are listening to the broadcast, Beverly, and they're not watching the live video. And remember to PTR, pull to refresh on Clubhouse while in the room so everyone can see the new profile pics. Oh my goodness, Beverly, thank you. I totally spaced out on that. PTR, it's my new favorite hashtag, PTR, pull to refresh. What is Beverly talking about? When you're in a room, you guys, whether you're a moderator, whether you're an audience member, whether you're on stage waiting your turn to ask a question, you pull down on your screen, just pull down on your screen. I can't do this because I'm live on Amazon right now and it refreshes everybody in your audience. People have come in, people have left and dropped out. So as a moderator, I always PTR, pull to refresh, before calling on my next guest so that I don't skip somebody. If you do skip somebody, just own it. 
Let them know you'll come right back to them. You can have fun with the process. But Beverly, thank you for sharing Pull to Refresh. PTR, you're going to hear that. If you're new to Clubhouse, it's like, what in the world's PTR? I actually Googled it. I Googled what is PTR in Clubhouse and realized what Pull to Refresh uh, meant. Jenny, Jenny Q, thank you, kiddo. Uh, this is such great info. And I'm going to be uh, rolling over to some improv tips and live streaming tips that Jenny Q uh, has shared with me over the years and what we can do with improv to create a more effective room, you guys, over in the platform. All right. So now what we're going to talk about is specifically moderating the room. Okay. I went over some of the general things with you, but now you know how to use Clubhouse. You know how to create a room. You know the dynamics of a room. So now you're moderating a room. Maybe it's not your first room, right? The more you moderate rooms, the more you create and moderate or co-moderate rooms, the better you're going to get at it. But you got a room set up. It's your room. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, and you go live. And what's going to happen is you're going to be the only person on stage to start off with. It's going to take a while for people to find you. It's going to take a while for people, even if they have your link, to click on it from their phone and Twitter and then jump over into your room or to find you as they walk down the hallway in Clubhouse and discover your room. There's a lot of noise in there. And here's a little pro secret. I'm wondering how many of you know this secret, okay? You've heard me mention this before, but I'm just curious. Let me know in the comments. If you, if you know this secret, type in yes. And if, you, if this is the first time you've heard it, type in no. So when you're down in the hallway, Clubhouse will recommend rooms for you to, uh, to participate in, okay? You can click a button and it says recommended rooms. You can click another button that says all rooms. You can click another link and it says just my rooms, just the rooms that you're setting up. As you're scrolling through this hallway, you're gonna see rooms that are of no interest to you, right? Um, silly rooms, rooms that are just on topics that are of no interest to you. You can swipe left to right and you can click hide and the algorithm will not show you those rooms anymore, or it may not show you that particular topic anymore. And I'm just curious how many of you knew that or are using that? I've used that every time I go into Clubhouse to continue to filter out what the algorithm is showing me. And I'm seeing more and more when I go into Clubhouse, the rooms that I'm not interested in are, are not being displayed to me as, um, as they have, as they were when I first started, you guys. So definitely use that little trick. So you're sitting there in your room. There's nobody there. Here's a trick, you guys. When you start your room, make sure you're unmuted. And I think you are when you start a room as a moderator and immediately start having a conversation, okay? You're not starting the room without anybody in there, but you're creating content that people, when they stop by to see what's going on in your room, you're gonna capture their attention. While you're doing that, hit the plus sign down at the bottom of your screen, and you can invite in people into your room by tapping on their pictures to come into your room. Um, and people will start coming into your room. Now, when you do that, you can't see the room. The, the list of people who are following you take up your phone screen. You're still live. Continue to talk. Listen, you guys, we're going to be talking about my book, right, The Ultimate Guide to Social Media. And right now I'm in another screen inviting people in, people who I think might be interested in the book or asking questions or meeting some of the authors that I'm going to be bringing on stage. They're world-renowned celebrities. This is going to be awesome, you guys. But do the same thing, everyone. Hit the plus button and let's get some butts in the seats. Let's bring some people into the room. Um, and I do that at the beginning of the rooms. So I'm talking generally about what the room is about. I'm keeping the conversation going so that somebody that may not know me who comes by the room understands that, hey, this is a trial lawyer talking about a book or it's a trial lawyer talking about motocross or paddleboarding, whatever it might be. I'm going to stick around for a few minutes. And once you uh, invite people in, you can then tap, remove the screen, you're back into the room and you're going to see people in the audience, right? And if you see people, you know, start using their names, start, hey, Jenny Q, it's great to see you. Um, you know, whoever's there, just keep the dynamics going. If you have a co-moderator, uh, you might want to make sure they're named as a co-moderator. You tap on their profile picture, you tap make co-moderator. They can then help control the room. They can bring people up. They can send people back down to the audience. Um, but when starting the room, that's what I've been doing, you guys. And so I'm the only person there. I'm, you're not alone. It happens to all of us. 
and you start bringing people in, you start giving the room a chance to develop, right? Just like in a real conference. Um, ask other people in your audience to do this also. Also do this every 10 or 15 minutes during the show. You know, hey, you guys, if you're having as much fun as I'm having, you know, definitely hit the plus button down below and invite in friends who you think might benefit or find value in what we're talking about. Maybe they have a legal question and they've been trying to get it answered for six months. Bring them into the room. Maybe we can help them out or take the conversation offline, get more facts and information. That's how you work the room, you guys. Um, one other thing about starting the room is once the room, I'm saying three to four or five minutes, you know, and you're doing this, and the room's building up, start the show. You know, that you know, you want to reward the people that are there on time. They're there to participate, to ask questions, to digest the content, and then dive into the show like we've been talking about. So don't be stressed if you're the only one in there. I'm looking here. Yes, Chris says, Hey, Chris, it's good to see you. Uh a skilled lawyer out of Kansas City. Wow, did not know about hiding rooms. Yes, Chris, that has been one of my saving graces. I'm seeing less and less nonsense on the platform. Everybody follow Chris on social media and follow Chris on Clubhouse. He's a new uh, user and we're doing a room today, today, Chris. Chris and I are doing a room on Clubhouse. Let me pull up my calendar and share it with the world. And this is how you how you roll, you guys. Share the rooms that you're working on. So, Chris, I've got it. Uh, I've got it at five my time, which would be eight uh, eight Eastern time tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you can let me know in the comments if that's right or not. But what we're going to be talking about is how lawyers. This is going to be fascinating. We're going to be talking about how lawyers can raise the bar when it comes to their verdicts instead of getting average jury verdicts at trial for their clients? How can they take it to the next level? How can they get exceptional results in trial or mediations or arbitrations, probably also in settlement negotiations? We've got a couple of other lawyers uh, who may be coming in who are some of the best trial lawyers in the country, and we're going to be sharing our best tips. Chris was kind enough to put this together. Let me see if he um, confirmed the time. Chris says 100% on the time. So I'm guessing, okay, so it's five my time, eight uh, Eastern, you guys, and look for my um, my tweet, okay? I'll share a link out on Twitter after today's show. So you just click on the link and you can come and join us on the show. So thank you, Chris, really appreciate that. Um, number two, you guys, now that your room's starting up, you're, you're getting people to invite people in and it's rocking and rolling, give some immediate context to the room, okay? In other words, don't keep everybody wondering what's this room about immediately using something a provocative statement uh something of interest uh, chapter 37 of my book is 10 ways to start your next video your next podcast your next social media post 10 different ways to immediately capture the attention of your audience do this on clubhouse even though it's audio you can do it um you know and so give some thought uh if you look at chapter 37 of my book or you go to streaming.lawyer and type in the search bar 10 ways to start your next live video for example you'll see all 10 all 10 ways whether it's starting with a joke if you're good at jokes whether it's incorporating bre a breaking news story okay the impeach impeachment trial that's going right now maybe i'm doing a room on you know how to how to get how to get items into evidence or how to create a uh, persuasive opening statement at time of trial. Look, you guys, if you're watching the impeachment trials like I am today, you're gonna see how important opening statements are. We're gonna talk about how the rest of us can give opening statements that entertain the jury and even more importantly, empowers the jury to make a decision that you need them to make for your client when the trial's over. Let's get started. There are 10 different ways to start your live videos, your social media posts, and your clubhouse rooms. And so check out uh, those tips, you guys, because they work really, really well. And it helps give context to the room. The room's going on. Remember, you're resetting the room every 10 or 15 minutes. You're sharing your disclaimer. If you're a lawyer, every 10 to 15 minutes. And you can have fun sharing disclaimers, you guys. You don't have to be that lawyer sharing that boring disclaimer. Listen, you guys, uh, just realize no legal advice is being given. I am a lawyer. I'm not your lawyer. OK, just remember that you didn't hire me, but I want to have a conversation with you. So let's dive back into the room 
and the trending topic, right? Just have fun with it and people will get the message. Um, invite others, once again, reset, invite other people in the room, both before your room goes live on social media in a blog post and a video like this, like I did with Chris's room this evening. You guys, join us in the room. There's, there's going to be some people in there that you're going to want to meet, right? And so look for the link on my Twitter feed. You can do this. You can invite people into other people's room, share other people's links. It's a powerful way to build up your community, to get followers, and to follow the right people. Uh, number four, you know, have a conversation with people, you guys. When you're in the room, there's a right and wrong way to ask questions. Uh, you know, Larry King passed away recently, and he was a gifted interviewer. Uh, he didn't make the interview about him. He always made it about the guest. Larry would ask a simple question, a short, simple question, an easy to understand question, a question that we all want to hear the answer to. And then he'd stop talking and let the guest answer. I think that works really, really well on Clubhouse also. And I have a note here. What I want to share with you guys, um, and hello, Amazon Live. I see you over there, is in my book, there's some chapters on helping you become a better communicator. What we did is we took some of the techniques and approaches that we use in trial to win million dollar cases for our clients. Guess what? Those communication approaches work just as well on social media. They work extremely well on Clubhouse, okay? And so rather than trying to figure out these things on your own, uh, you might wanna just write down these chapter numbers because these are, these are chapters on communication that work extremely well on Clubhouse, okay? So uh, number seven, Building a Community by Joey Vitale. Joey's built a huge Facebook group. He's a lawyer out of St. Louis. Trademarks are his specialty. Uh, being an amazing, awesome human being is one of his secret uh, superpowers. And if you read Joey's chapter on building a community, you can use many of those approaches to build a community on Clubhouse, okay? And that includes how you communicate with your community. How often in a room? How do you handle questions in a back and forth conversation? Uh, also, Jenny Q, chapter 21 on live streaming tips. What Jenny Q shared in my book about how to go live, how to interact with her audience, that works on Clubhouse too. And something she and her partner, Megan, are rolling out soon. So look for, look for the link that I'm going to share on Twitter is a course on how to help you use improv to communicate better with your audience. And that's what I'm getting at, is if you learn how to tap into the power of improv to work your audience and be more dynamic on Clubhouse, because it's all voice, it's all audio, to take people's questions and using improv techniques, um, adding a little bit of sassiness and spice to that question in your answer, and then coming back to the person that asked the question and having them ask a follow-up. Improving. What's going on at stage? Uh, super powerful. And once again, this is going to separate you, I think, from everyone else on Clubhouse. Uh, chapter 35, Three Unbreakable Laws of Communication by the one and only Carmine Gallo, who wrote the book, Talk Like Ted. Carmine interviewed 200 of the top TED speakers. What makes them special? Why are they so much better than everybody else, at least in the eyes of the TED audience? I think all the TED speakers are great, right? What Carmine did is he shared a chapter in my book. Once again, it's chapter 35. And he talks about how when we're communicating, and I'm paraphrasing, but you want to make sure that, for example, on Clubhouse, as a moderator, as a co-moderator, as someone on stage, your audio questions and responses, you're entertaining, it's unique, and it's presented in a way that's memorable. And you do that by incorporating short stories into the conversation. So in that chapter, if you pick up tips on how to communicate like some of the best TED speakers in the world, when you're moderating a room, when you're brought up to stage and you raise your hand and asking a question, tapping into the power of what Carmine talks about will help you stand out. It will get people to connect with you and follow you. It will get people to reach out to you and co-moderate rooms with you. I mean, tap into these existing resources and tools, you guys. Get Carmine's book, Talk Like Ted. It'll save you a lot of time, and it will also expedite. It will accelerate your success curve, right? So instead of it looking like this, like most of our success curves on Clubhouse, it'll look like this. That's what we want. All right. Next, um, one of the books I wanted, chapters, 
uh, 38, the storytelling framework that works everywhere by Chris Lemma. The storytelling framework is a way to tell stories. So when you're asking a question or you're moderating a room and you're telling a story, you can tell a good story or you can tell a bad story. Good st storytellers aren't born, okay? They learn the art of st storytelling. It's not hard. It's uh, There are different ways to tell different types of stories. I think Chris covered some of the best approaches in chapter 38 of the book, you guys, also on Amazon once again. So check that out. And then uh, you've heard me mention this earlier in today's live video for the 313 uh, approach to communication by Ryan Foland. It's an easy way to craft what a lot of us think are elevator speeches, but it's the first words that come out of your mouth. They bring me up on stage. Hey, Mitch, what do you do? Right. What's my response? How can I immediately add value without boring everybody? How can I capture your attention? It's by using the 313 approach that Ryan Folan shares in chapter 42. So I made a note that I wanted to just highlight those five or six chapters in the book. There's 52 chapters in the book, but those will help you with your clubhouse experience. Um, when you're moderating the room and somebody comes up and asks a question, number five, mute your mic. Okay, a lot of people jump up, they get excited, but they're not muting their mic, so it gets noisy. We kind of talked about that earlier. Number six, resetting the room. Number seven, manage your stage and audience. Number eight, engaging. And I think you guys, you know, we covered a lot of these at the beginning of the video, but just understand that the more you participate and engage and encourage others in your room to engage in their clubhouse experiences, the more value people will get from your rooms, the better they'll feel once the room's done. Remember, you know, it's not necessarily what you say, but it's how you make people feel. And if you, from your heart, while moderating a, a room or you get asked to jump up the stage and you ask a question and you make people feel good because of the value that you've added, because of the resources that you've shared, um, I think that's what it's all about on the Clubhouse platform, especially for the lawyers, especially for the professionals that want to tap into, you know, the hottest app on the planet right now uh, to build their brands, to help others, and to uh, create a business network or relationship environment that will result in referrals coming your way next week, next month or next year if that's one of your goals. So this has been fun, you guys. My name is Mitch Jackson. You guys can stay connected with me at streaming.lawyer. If you want to get notified with either a short text or short email as to when my next show's coming up, just jump over to streaming.lawyer slash Mitch, M-I-T-C-H, and we can make that happen. I hate spam as much as you guys do. I will not waste your time. I will not divert your attention. I'll just let you know with a quick link when I'm going live next. And uh, if you'd like to join me, I'd always love to have you in any of my clubhouse rooms. And every moderator I've co-moderated with, even people that I didn't know until clubhouse started up, I know they feel the same way, you guys. This, this platform is all about being positive. It's all about helping others. Uh, for some of the uh, lawyers, the seasoned lawyers out there that have been around for a while, for me, one of the... Uh, big pluses of the platform is to be able to help law school students and young lawyers with setting up their practices, with their trial advocacy skills, and some of the other things that, frankly, they don't teach in law school. So, you guys, this has been a blast. I Thank you for all of you hanging out for so long. I really appreciate that. Uh, this will be recorded, and you can share the recording. I'll share it all over social. Um, so if you have friends that weren't able to make this, they're out doing something right now, you can steer them back and they can watch it on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, which for the time being is still available on Twitter or over at my blog. I'll go ahead and make sure this, this video is embedded at streaming.lawyer if it hasn't been done already. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Enjoy the journey. I know it's difficult right now. People need our help. Lawyers out there, let's do everything we can to help our clients, to help our friends, family, and community members move forward in a positive direction. Uh, and let's 10X empathy You know, from this point forward in 2021, you guys. The world needs more empathy, definitely. All right, my name is Mitch Jackson. Make it a masterpiece. Bye-bye, everybody.